what is this big mouth preacher talking about? In order to live as Christ, I've got to battle my own nature. For my greatest problem is me. My greatest trial is me. In order to live as Christ, I've got to put this big, ugly, six foot two guy under foot and crush him in order to live as Christ. For to live as Christ is to suffer with Christ. I've got to face the battle. Tell somebody I'm ready to face it. Come on, tell somebody I'm ready to face it. But the problem is we don't want to fight the giants. But we want to eat the grapes. Jesus, you know I need this money. Do you go look for a job today? Jesus, I need this healing right now. But did you put the oil and rub and pray and pray without ceasing? Jesus, my daughter, my son is wayward. But did you get out and go look for them and find them? You sit at home and expect God to fight the giants for you. But I don't need you, amen, anyways. Mm. Lord God. And we face our Goliath with great expectation that God will do all the work. Hallelujah. But we leave the battle wounded because we realize that God will leave you in the fire. He will leave you in the fire. If you're not ready to fight Goliath, he will leave you to be wounded by Goliath. Mm -hmm. Oh God, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody. Get ready to fight, get ready to fight. Come on, tell them, get ready to fight, get ready to fight. Mm, God. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, me Jesus, oh, me Jesus. Oh yeah, we want to fight Goliath with great expectation. Oh God, we leave the battle wounded and wondering where is God and where is our prejudice? When it hurts, where do they go? Where are people when it hurts? You wonder where people turn from you. Where do people go when it hurts? Oh, why am I betrayed by my bridge and why do I feel left out? Well, you're wounded and you're left behind because you don't want to fight the battle. You don't want to fight Goliath. You don't want to fight him. You want to stay right there and you leave the battle wounded. You leave hurt and you walk around with hurt and you walk around with pain. And we have some people in the apostolic faith that are walking around with pain and hurt and putting on a smile on their faces and acting as if everything is honky dory. And I say, praise the Lord, sister. And you know you don't like the sister. You know she did something to you. And you say, praise the Lord. You're a hypocrite. I'm just talking to you. And because you feel betrayed and wounded, you allow unforgiveness to creep into your heart. You make room in your heart for unforgiveness. And it creeps into your heart. Mm -hmm. And when unforgiveness comes, it has the power to resurrect pride. Oh, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you. As the Lord give it to me. I don't know. Sometimes I don't understand what he's saying. But we allow unforgiveness to come in. And what unforgiveness does, it germinates. It goes down into the soil and it breathes. It gives and infuses life into pride. And before long, you're standing up in pride. Your wound will raise up pride in your life. Mm, you continue to function, however, within your calling. You're anointed in your call, and you continue to function in your calling. But the gift of God is without repentance. So God gave you a gift, and you're gifted all the way through. You will never stop being gifted. Even when you're a malice and a murderer, you're still gifted. Oh yes, we need to understand that. Saul was gifted. Saul was king and as long as Saul lived, Saul would be king. Saul was a rejected king, but he was a king nonetheless. 
You can be filled with wounds and hurt and anger and hatred and still be anointed. Yes. Oh God, I'm just talking to you. Yes. Mm, I'm just talking to you. <laughs> mm. The Bible tells us about this, 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 this seer, this prophet whose name was Aitophel. The history of Aitophel is of such that the Bible said when Aitophel spoke, he spoke as an oracle of God. In other words, he spoke as God would speak himself. The Bible said that this Aitophel spoke when David needed a word from the Lord. Anything that Aitophel said, God would honor it. If God said, Aitophel said, David, go down uh, to Lodabar and collect anything, God would honor it. Every single thing he said, he would honor it. But the Bible said David one day when it was time for battle decided that he wouldn't go to battle. For every spring the king would go to battle. And the objective was to enlarge his territory. But this one spring David decided that he was not going. That he was getting old and he needed some rest. The Bible said that he stayed home and you know the story. Mm -hmm. He saw something that he liked. Not everything that looked good is good for you. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It may look good, but it may burn your belly. It might give you a, a sweet night go up. Well, you better talk to me today. And so David now saw the nanny goat. And David said, I want that thing. Oh my God. And you know the story. David was king. And so, you know, he usurped his authority over everybody. He said, bring her to me. But you know that's one of your best man's woman. He said, I don't care who she is. Bring her to me. I am king. Sometimes you abuse your power as leaders. Hello, somebody. Speaking the word of God is not abusing your power. No. 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 But you sharpen your authority over the people of God. That's abusing your power. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. So now David now, the Bible said, got this woman pregnant. You know the story. And when she was pregnant, he tried to send her away. Try to cover up his tracks. Well, I'm just speaking. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Sometimes you get yourself in some circumstance. You try to backtrack and try to cover up. Well, the all-seeing God, eyes of God is ever watching. The all-seeing eyes of God is ever present. The all-seeing eyes of God is always watching your circumstance. And I thank God for the blood. Had it not been for the blood, many of us would have been dead a long time ago. Anointed but dead. Lord Jesus, had it not been for the blood, somebody said the blood. Somebody said thank you for the blood. Had it not been for the blood, many of us would have been dead. So David took for granted his circumstance. The Bible said she was pregnant. I'm just giving you. I'm just talking to you. And so she got pregnant. And then what do you do when the circumstance upon you? Oh my God, David said, look now. Go to your husband and give him a jacket. You might not understand that. Right? Right. Let him wear a jacket that's not his. No. no. And so the husband came home and said, go to your wife. But when God sees God, stop the thing. I would not stop it. Go, no. They said, go out to your wife. And she conspired down there and said, Hi, honey. How was battle? He said, I'm not coming down there. Right. 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 He said, how can I do this to the soldiers of God who are on the battlefield? So the Bible said, they know the story. And so David now said, how do I hide this thing? So he said, I'm going to kill this brother. I'm going to kill him for when you're dead, dead man can't talk. Yes. The blood speaks. Come on, someone says blood speaks. No, I'm just going, I'm just talking, I'm just talking. The blood speaks. It doesn't matter what you do, the blood speaks. You thought you killed me. You thought you had me down. The devil thought he had me shut up. He thought he put me on the foot and crushed me and buried me. But he spilled my blood. And as he spilled my blood, my blood cried out from the ground. Lord, remember me. And I'm from the grave. Just talk. Just talk. And so 
David now yes. killed mm-hmm. one of his best soldiers. Right. Mm-hmm. The problem was, and a lot of people don't know this, was that the very man that stood by David's side, who was David's prophet and or seer, who inquired from God, who knew the mind of God, it was his granddaughter. Mm. And Sheba was Haithophel's granddaughter. And so he knew by the Spirit what had transpired. But the problem is he knew how God moved. He knew the functionality of God that as long as David lived, he would be king. But this man of God held it in his heart. He held the wound he held the pain in his heart. He refused to let it go, Sister Nicole. Sometimes we've been hurt by people and we just can't let go of the pain. And we can't let go of the hurt. And we can't let go of what they've done to us and we're trying. And he said, I want to let it go, but it keeps popping up and you keep getting angry. And it keeps saying, Lord God, I wanted to go, but this can't go. But in this instant, Aito felt said, there's going to come a time when I'll get my shot at it. There'll come a time when David will be vulnerable. There'll come a time when I get to hit him right where it hurts. I will not forgive him. I want to tell you that unforgiveness is a sin against God. Your unforgiveness will eat you up like a canker sore. Your unforgiveness will drive you down to the pit. Unforgiveness is not of God. Aito felt could not forgive. So I said forgiveness is likened unto drinking poison and watching and waiting for your enemy to die. Yeah. 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 Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and watching your enemy and waiting for him to die. Right. You're really killing yourself yeah. and not your enemy. Right. Oh, help me, Jesus. Yeah. He could not forgive David. David was forgiven by God. Yeah. But he could not forgive David. The Lord said, I will blot out your sin and cause myself not to remember it anymore and cast it into the deeper sea. But some people put on their scuba gear and go digging down to get it, to find it, to use it against you. Oh, God. Yeah, mind is not ready for this. God forgave you. Threw it in the deepest part of the ocean. But some folks put on their scuba gear and To find out your sickness, to find out your failures, and to use it against you. But the devil is alive. When God said I'm forgiven, I am forgiven. When God said I'm healed, I am healed. When God said I'm delivered, I am delivered. The devil is alive. I want to shut the mouth of every messenger. You can bring in my head past to me and throw it in my face. It's under the blood. Oh, okay, I'm just talking. Uh, don't get too excited. I'm just talking. I'm right, so now. Mm, God fell on his face and said, Lord, I, I, I have sinned against thee. And be alone. But, uh, I didn't understand that scripture for you. I, I must confess, I'm a preacher. I only understood it a couple days ago. Uh, the Lord showed me something about the scripture. He said, I said, How can David say he only sinned against him? I said, God, I don't get it. For years, he said, Well, we'll find out. A few days ago, I'm looking at it, and I realized something profound. Huh. That when you do it, and we're talking about it. When you do it to the least of these, my disciple, you do it also to me. Hmm. They are me and I am them. David knew it, God. David was a man of God. David caught that revelation. He said, God, I have sinned against you and you alone. Understanding that you and all your people are one. And so God, I have sinned and blood. Sin, blot out my transgression. Oh, 